When it comes to mini PCs, the one thing we don't see very often is a very pretty one. Hey there. Ooh. Today we'll be reviewing the Geekom A7. It promises to be a powerhouse of a mini PC. Can it hold on to that promise? Or will it fall like a turtle with my bags? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. Here's what we got from Geekom, and let's open this thing up. Magic hands! So you got sent this from Geekom, the purpose of video review. It's not a sponsored video, and no cash has been exchanged. They've not told us what to say, and all thoughts are our own. So here's the box, I guess? Looks pretty cute. Nothing much on the sides. Let's check the back of the box. 7940HS, they sent us two terabytes, nice. Ooh. In the box we get a mini PC. This one's very Apple-esque. We get a, a card. Let's just check if there's any uh, money or Steam coupons. No. And under here, we have a HDMI cable, roughly around one meter in length. And in this bag, we have a power adapter. This one's small and feels extremely modern compared to the other ones we've had on the channel. This one outputs at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, up to 120 watts. We'll use that with this cable. And here's the instructions. <laughs> it's like a map. <laughs> Gotta hand it to them though, this is pretty efficient. We have a Ryzen 7940HS, which is an 8 core processor that boosts up to 5.2 GHz. And with the 780M GPU, we should be able to play some recent games. We have a nice amount of storage, but it's a shame to see HDMI 2.0 instead of anything with a higher bandwidth. This might take a while. I have enough stamina to go all night. And yeah, this looks great. Very tidy. So a quick look around. On the front we have the power switch. Seems to be for people with small fingers. This button is tiny. Moving on, we have a 3.5mm headphone jack. Two USB 3.2 ports. And this one has power delivery. Shifting to the side, we've got holes. Looks a bit like a cheese grater, but this will be for air intake. And on the back is where we have all the action. At the top we have the air exhaust vent, DC in for power, USB 4, Type-C, HDMI, 2.5 GB Ethernet LAN, and two more USB ports. The one on the bottom is USB 2, which can be handy for legacy devices and operating systems. We have another USB-C, and at the bottom, another HDMI port. We love how they've added these little labels here, so we know what each port does without even guessing. Moving around we have an SD card slot, and even though it's considered as legacy media, it's still used today by professional cameramen. There's nothing much on the bottom, only labels and four rubber feet. They're not very tall, so all they do is keep it stable on the table. And these two little holes here are probably for a vase amount, which didn't come in the box. It's about time for the size comparison. The Geekom A7 is slightly smaller than the less powerful A5. And it's also smaller than the GMK Tech K8. It's larger than the Chewy Larkbox Pro, but it's minuscule when compared to the Ace Magic AD08. It's a 3.5 inch floppy disk. And a Game Boy! Running a. Here's a banana. And as always, a Roy Bush tea bag. And as we like to be thorough, Here's a measuring tape. It's like 11 by 11 and uh, This mini PC fits in my pocket. When we first boot it up, we're thrown into the Windows setup screen. And here we choose a language, region, and keyboard settings. Similar to the Geekom A5, it can't finish the setup without going online. And forcing us to connect without scanning the computer for nasties is very dangerous. And while we could go the Linux route, there is a workaround to this problem. Push Shift and F10, then type in ubi backslash Bypass NRO. Once you hit the enter key, the computer will restart, then you can click I don't have internet, then continue with limited setup. Around five minutes later, you're in. Checking the system settings, the specs check out. We have Windows 11 Pro. And down here, we can see the computer is already activated. The Windows key will be bound to the motherboard, so if you want to reinstall, it should be no problem. We checked for any signs of tampering, and both Defender and the Edge browser were untouched. So now we connected to the Wi-Fi, and downloaded some tools on Ninai.com. From this website we can get many free tools, such as Office and Antivirus. But while installing, the computer went to sleep. The default settings of 5 minutes is far too short, 
and we can easily adjust this to a sensible level. We check for viruses and malware, we got the thumbs up from three different tools. Then we updated Windows, the Adrenaline Graphic Drivers, and now we can test the system. So this mini PC is quite powerful, very snappy in Windows, and it can run Office without sweat. As well as 2D graphic tools like Illustrator, Photoshop or Krita. It'll be beefy enough to make music. Or you can use it for video editing. The included NVMe is very fast, so it has no problem scrubbing through this footage. And while there are many PCs with a higher core count, the 7940HS does a great job of rendering 4K video. And if you're wondering about Ryzen AI, the AMD IPU is in the device manager. If you want to know how to get this to run, please check our other video. Regular tasks like internet browsing is no problem. Oh no, she's the cop of face dog man. That's right. So you better watch your step. We've even found this computer. And it's got full 5 out of 5 on Amazon. We can watch Amazon Prime with a HD button lit. Netflix. Hear the stats. And 4K YouTube. It's using the VP09 codec, and it runs really well. Moving on to the benchmarks, the Geekcom A7 sits at the very top of our Geekbench scores, which is quickly knocked down by its performance in TimeSpy. As this test pushes both GPU and CPU simultaneously, it may point to an issue regarding thermals. Here's Cinebench, which tests the CPU. And finally, Shizuku, with surprisingly high disk speeds from our NVMe. We can easily connect our Bluetooth controller. And it's about time to test out some games. First up is Love Browsers 3 from the Devolver Bootleg Pack. And as you'd expect, it runs great. Terraria. But let's make this computer work a little. It's Super Warden GP2, and this game is quite difficult to run, especially for the Intel Mini PCs. But here, we're at full speed. We love Katamari Reroll. Dota 2. At 1080p best settings, FPS stays in the high 80s. Fortnite. We're using 1080p epic settings on the performance renderer, and this game is running really well. A requested game by Raymond Dye, Shoot Him in the Nuts Remake. And one from Market Racer, Street Fighter 6 Demo. 1080p, medium settings, around 40 FPS. But switching this to 720p, we get full speed. Next up is a favourite of the channel, Rocket League. At 1080p high quality settings, we're getting a very good frame rate. But after a short while, it really does start to slow down. We get jerky gameplay as well as slower FPS. It looks like thermal throttling is in play, as our GPU and CPU temps are getting quite high. And this also applies to our memory. The same thing also happened in Yakuza 6. The game looks very playable, then all of a sudden, we get hit. Usually, we'd be able to change TDP settings in BIOS, but here it's not explained very well. These essentially change the power limits to 40, 45, and 54 watts. And we don't exactly know what it does to the fan settings. If we test out each in a benchmark, the lowest setting we have actually performed the best, so we definitely have a problem with the temperatures. But after retesting Yakuza 6 in quiet mode, it still did not fix our issue. So what we need to do is cool it some more. And we can use a software solution called Universal x86 Tuning Utility. Using this free tool, we should be able to get more control over our CPU. So let's give it a shot. We've got some custom presets. Let's try Eco. So while we only have 14 FPS, our system stays very cool. We're only using a fraction of power, and we have a stable frame rate. We tried the other pre-made settings, but none of them helped our course. What we can do is make our own. Go to Custom Presets, 
and we'll change all these power limits to 35 watts. And then after saving and applying the preset, we can play a game with our temps in check. Sure, we will have lower frames, but a far better gaming experience. Moving on to high-end emulation, this system is very capable. Here's some Xbox 360. Wii U. And PlayStation 3. This system is a bit of an emulation monster. Let's continue in Badass Era. We'll first have a look at the BIOS, and to be honest, it's very disappointing. While it does have fan modes, wake on LAN and secure boot, there's nothing really here. We would really like to have more options such as toggling the IPU, separated fan settings, or changing the size of the GPU memory. With secure boot off, we can load up Badass Era. And while our Wi-Fi seems to be working, it feels a bit flaky. We couldn't connect with our Bluetooth, so if you want to use a wireless controller, you need to use a dongle. But outside that, many of our emulator machines work great. Atari ST, Commodore Amiga, MS-DOS, Xbox, and upscaled PlayStation 2. This game is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's about time for a teardown. Can't really see any screws. Let's have a look under these feet. Using a small minus driver, we can pull these up. Now we can see the four screws holding on the bottom plate. Use a small positive driver to take these out. and the bottom comes off very easily. This might be why we were having problems earlier with Wi-Fi, as the antenna is stuck to the bottom of the case. To get further inside, there are four more screws to remove. And we're in. So the parts they've used here are quite decent. We've got two sticks of Crucial DDR5 and an Acer NVMe. It's nice to see we've got a graphite heatsink on this. But it's unfortunate we don't have a second slot. Here's a Wi-Fi chip. Let's see what happens when we take these four out. We have easy access to the whole board, so if you wanted to redo the thermal paste or something like that, it's not a difficult job at all. Or you could even make your own case. After putting the computer back together, we tested the Wi-Fi signal strength, and it was exceptionally poor. 60% and then 57% on the retest. Moving into the same room as the router, it got a bit better, but definitely not optimal for a new computer. To compare, here's a cheap Wi-Fi dongle we got from AliExpress. 100% signal strength, and almost double the download speeds. If we compare it with other mini PCs we've had on the channel, there is definitely an issue with Wi-Fi. So if you pick one of these up, use LAN cable or a Wi-Fi dongle. In order to get over 100Hz ultra-wide 1440p, we needed to use a USB-C to display port cable. And that maxes out a monitor 144Hz 10-bit. And grid support looks amazing, until, yep, thermal throttling. When it comes to fan noise, the A7 is surprisingly quiet. And it pulls 9 watts. Now with fan profile to performance. And even under load, it's still rather quiet. and pulls just under 90 watts. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Geekom A7 has a powerful processor, and the components inside this sleek case design make Windows extremely responsive and snappy. It's a quiet PC, and will be ideal for productive work or for emulation. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi is extremely poor, and with throttling due to high temperatures, we cannot recommend this for gaming. We would have liked to see more options in the BIOS. Maybe we could turn off IPU and adjust fan settings, we'd be able to see a PC that could game. But them cons? really are heavy. If you're looking for alternatives, you could try the 7840HS version of this. The slightly lower clocks will make it cooler. The Geekom A5 is a bit slower, but cute, cheap, and can still play some games. But if you still want to have great CPU power, at the same time keep things cool, the GMK Tech K6 may be an option worth thinking about. 
While this mini PC didn't quite knock it out of the park, we're sure that next time, Geekom are going to find a winner. And now, for the summary. Once upon a time, I found a little machine, she called me 7 mini PC, attack enthusiast stream. oh yeah, it looks so cute. Super quiet, fits in your pocket too, with a Ryzen 7940HS chip, what's not to love, it's true. But as the days went by, the heat started to rise, the mini PC got hotter and hotter, what a surprise. This little device has driven me insane Just a little catch, oh yeah!